Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. Uh, my name is Cindy. Thank you so much for finding me and joining me. So, we are, it is November 11th. It is Remembrance Day. Let's all make sure that we just take a moment to pause and reflect on what we have because others have so sacrificed. Okay. So I have gotten some requests um, to take a look at sort of what's going on with Canadian politics, um, specifically with two provinces who have gone um, very conservative. Now, Alberta went conservative. It went um, United Progressive Conservative, which is under the leadership of Kenny. And you've got Ontario, and that's kind of unusual. Like Alberta is a conservative province. It has been for, for a really long time. Um, Ontario, not quite so much. And so it's very interesting that they went conservative and they went conservative with Ford, who, um, well, let me just say this. Either you love him or you hate him. They're, people I don't think are very neutral about him. So interesting that, you know, those, both of those provinces have really um, brought in very conservative governments and, and very conservative sort of thinking and mentality. And to some, to many, um, it feels very Trumpian. So I want to take a look at both of those provinces and see how they are faring. Um, I just want to do a real fast start with um, the Liberal government in Canada. Indeed, we do have a um, minority government. The NDP are, you know, working in conjunction with the Liberal government to ensure that they have the votes they need for the things they need the votes for, and in effect, sort of creating a block for the Conservatives. Also, the Quebecois, also, um, you know, that was a, a, a surprisingly large uh, win for them. So here we have it. Let's take a look at Trudeau and the Liberal government and see what it is that we can see. It's just going to be a quick one. I just want a bit of an overview. So come on down because I have a question. All righty. So, um... Canadian Liberal Government, Canadian Liberal Government, Canadian Liberal Liberal Government. Okay. In in some ways, because of the um, integration, if you will, of both the Bloc Quebecois and, and if I'm saying that wrong, please don't correct me, um, and the NDP. So what has happened there is, on the one hand, it has actually um, tightened up some of the freedom around the Liberals. They're going to be a little, they're going to have to account in a broader way because these other, you know, government parties are going to have to be able to find some agreement with them. And so there's going to be, I think, more compromising going on going forward than we have seen, you know, in the last um, four years or so. So, um, but the rest of this actually bodes really, really well. They're talking about having their eye on the fortunes of the country. They're, they're looking at what do we do and how do we do it to make people feel um, not only that we are listening to them, that we are taking their needs and concerns into account. And that includes the people who did not vote for them and who frankly were really sad that Andrew Scheer did not get in and is now currently not running the Canadian government. 
So they're, they're trying to sort of draw together the country again, because although the divisiveness and the divide is not anywhere near as dramatic as it is um, in the United States, do not kid yourself into thinking it isn't there because it absolutely is there. So they're looking at how to bring some unity back into the country. And because you're talking about um, Trudeau and Singh, you're talking about two people who really at their base in philosophies are very, very common, right? They're very inclusive, they're very welcoming, and they want everybody to sort of have um, the chance. So that's, you know, they're in sync that way. So they will hopefully be able to strengthen um, you know, what's happening there. Who they're going to aggravate are the people who do not want to be inclusive and who think that we should take many, many steps backwards in time instead of forwards in time. So there's going to kind of be this tug of war going on, um, but they're, they're mindful of it and they're doing what they can to kind of try to bring this together. And I say that as I sit in the province of Alberta, where people are actually talking about separating from Canada. I have no words. I, do, I just don't. I'll get to that. I'm sure I'll find the words by the time I do the Alberta portion of this reading. Um, okay, so, and they're going to be looking overseas. They're going to be looking at strengthening ties. Um, I believe it was China. I think I've got the country right who has now lifted their restrictions on um, importing Canadian pork. So, the, you know, again, there's some good movement going on. There's things that are going to help people. And it's, in, you know, it's kind of interesting because um, some of the very conservative people, I think, that probably voted against that government, um, that is the government that has allowed, you know, pork and pork producers to get back on some sort of a level and stable playing ground. So the government under the Liberals is going to continue to move forward. It's not maybe going to be quite as um, forceful as it was because they're now, you know, frankly, they've gotten their hands slapped and they were told to back off and settle down and don't carry on like only the people who voted for you and what they want is important. A lesson that the United States, for some reason in their past election, just completely missed the boat on. So there is that awareness and that mindfulness. Um, you know, yeah, it really, you know, there was issues, right? I mean, there was issues with lawsuits and and, you know, people saying Trump or Trudeau didn't do that or he should have done that. And there was a lot of, like, squabbling and, and back and forth. And people were just unsettled and unhappy. But it looks as if with this new government, there is a, a, a strength that appears to be created that perhaps wasn't there before. So that is... Um, a really good thing. You've got a rule of law coming in here. And, and honestly, I am reading this card literally as Canadians agree that we can all have different opinions, but we are not entitled to different facts. And that's one of the places that um, in the province of Alberta and Ontario, both of the leaders who are in now, so Kenny and Ford, have both been called on the paper because they inflated the numbers pertaining to the provincial deficit to make the situation seem so much more dire and dramatic and, and you know dangerous for your safety and security, except their numbers were inflated to a ridiculous degree, both of them. And that, again, that just has a feel that doesn't quite feel like Canadian politics. We want all the facts across the board to be uniform. And then as Canadians, we will make our decisions and go forward. But you cannot start creating some illusion of the way you think it is because it's going to help your election. Ultimately, it looks at this point as if the um, Trudeau government is actually going to be able to, 
you know, regain some of the strength that they lost in the last little while. Um, and so, you know, for Canadians who were more interested in that we versus me kind of government, um, that frankly is really good news, right? Because it indicates that, um, you know, some of the harshness and the divisiveness can kind of be, um, you know, just sort of pulled back into, whoopsie, uh, pulled back into, you know, place. So it's not quite so broad and not quite so harmful and not quite so hurtful. Okay, so I'm going to move now to Ontario under four. So um, according to my daughter who knows this stuff because she is, um, she's getting her after degree, she has a master's and she's getting her after degree in education. And so let me tell you, on a weekly basis, I get a litany of complaints from her about what the Kenny government is doing and, and how they are really, really hurting, you know, teachers and students and, um, you know, it's, it's not good. But in any case, and, and something that she says is that, you know, we are 12 months behind Ontario. So whatever crap Ford is doing in Ontario, Kinney is likely to do the same crap in Alberta within the year. And I got to tell you, um, I don't think that she's actually wrong. So let's take a look at Ontario first and see if people there are, um, are getting tired of Ford and his antics. And the thing is that, you know, for the people who never wanted Ford, didn't like him, probably didn't like his brother much, um, those aren't the one whose opinions need to change or be swayed, correct, right? You're looking at for the people who believed in Ford, trusted in Ford, thought he was the good guy. Um, they're the ones who there kind of needs to be, there. you know, they need to have some clarity. So let's take a look at the conservative government in Ontario. Conservative government Ontario, Conservative Government, Ontario, Conservative Government, Ontario. How's that going there for you guys? <clears throat> All right. More and more people are starting to see and recognize how absolutely destructive um, the Ford mandate, if you will, is. They are cutting and slashing. I mean, and let's be honest, conservatives do that anyway. But they are doing it in such a way that it is actually causing alarm, flat out alarm, because somebody even if you're a conservative, okay, and even if you voted for him, and even if you still really like him, you know somebody who is being impacted or affected by the decisions and choices that he is making and the things that he is implementing. You know, you might be a grandmother and it is your children who are in school whose class sizes have virtually doubled. You may have a neighbor who, um, you know, works for a part of the government that has now been cut and slashed. You yourself may be having some health concerns or health issues and, oh, look, he just, you know, tromped that all the heck. So everybody knows somebody. And what that's going to do is that is actually going to um, increase the amount of resistance to what he is doing. Um, it's not, people are starting to look at it really soon. And this is the thing about conservatives that um, it kind of, it's kind of this little word game that they play, 
And if you just listen to the words and you don't actually think about what they're saying, you know, it's a good word game. What they say is, we want more people to make those decisions for themselves. We want to put the money back in their pocket so they can make their own choices. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that the things that you require, the services you use, are going to be cut. And they tell you that when they, because they cut this, that you're going to get more money in your pocket, but it's it's completely out of balance, okay? So it's like this. Um, if the government, and I'm gonna go back to students and teachers, just, so, I mean, I don't mean to be biased, but it's just that I hear the most about those. Um, so let's say, that you get a rebate from the government of $200 because you know what? They have cut, um, because they cut how much they're going to mandate tuition, for an example. So they give you, if you're qualified for it, a $200, and I'm making these numbers up, a $200 kind of tax rebate because guess what? You know, you get to choose where you want to spend your education dollars. Well, and that sounds brilliant until you actually look at the reality of it. And the reality of it is they didn't cut that education portion by $200. They cut it by $2,000 per person. So guess what? Guess who ends up with their extra $200 in their pocket? and $1,500 more on the other end of it. And that is why you need to be very careful about that kind of conservative rhetoric because it's one of those things that, that catches your attention. It's like, well, who wouldn't want an extra 100 in their pocket? Of course, until you stop and realize what you are losing. Um, and so more and more people are starting to come to that actual realization. And the thing is, is people who have lived in Ontario for a long time. I mean, that poor province is actually still smarting under um, the Bob Ray government. And which I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was NDP. But I could be wrong. Um, but so what my point is that in Ontario, this kind of destructive um, cutting and slashing because the province is so congested with people in, in certain, you know, urban areas, it is felt so dramatically and so suddenly. So you just all of a sudden have a lot of people who are starting to really, really push back on what that looks like and how that is happening. So I don't see his government being a successful one over the term. Um, there is not going, he is not going to leave office before his time is done, if you were hoping. I'm not seeing any indication um, that he is going to be removed from office or leave office in any way, shape, or form. But I don't see him being able to um, carry forward with yet another term. Because what's happening is people are experiencing this pain and this destruction in their own lives. They are seeing it within their province. They are seeing, you know, and again, the news came out that he amplified the, um, the debt of that province so much that now you don't even have the same facts. But as, this, as his government continues and more and more people get stressed and more and more people get worried, you're going to see more and more light. You know what? I would not be surprised if you start seeing sort of some of the kind of investigative journalism that we are seeing in other countries um, in order to push back against this narrative. And frankly, that honestly goes um, for both Ontario and Alberta. I'm aware of the fact, by the way, that other provinces in the country are also conservative. Those are the two that I'm focusing on. Those are the two I have been asked um, to take a look at. So, uh, yeah, so as more and more comes out, he's going to have a bigger fight on his hands. He is not going to be able to pull this off. This constant looking away from the truth is not going to serve him very well. Um, 
people are just going to be upset. They're starting to realize that instead of them being in some miraculous Eden, um, they're starting to realize that, oh no, we're actually being left out in the cold in a rather significant way. So I don't know how many years are left in um, the Ford government uh, mandate, but you know, it's, it's going to be a wee little bit bumpy, okay? Um, more and more people are going to start waking up and, and recognizing how incredibly dangerous the Ford government has been for the province of Ontario. And um, hopefully we'll be able to see some change taking place there. But do not kid yourself, it is not... Um, a slam dunk okay this is going to be one of those things where actually people have to work really uh, diligently to ensure that people don't become apathetic because that's exactly what happens when you feel as if you really don't have um, you know control of the situation Either you get fighting mad or you just sort of surrender so Let's move on to Alberta. And honestly, a lot of the stuff that I said about Ontario um, in terms of the alternative facts um, apply. I, I don't know the numbers for um, Ontario, but I do know that here in Alberta, they have taken off, I think they're called caps, I'm not sure, um, on tuition for secondary education. And... In three years, your tuition is going to go up 21%. Now, if you want to show me where the government has put 25% of education costs back into the hands of teachers and students, okay, well, that would be, and I would look at that, but that's exactly not, is not what is happening. So let's, um, let's see where we go from here. Alberta. How's it looking for the province of Alberta? You've got a segment of the population who thinks that we should do a Brexit, except they're calling it a Westix, Wex, it. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's see. Um, conservative government, Alberta. In fact, Kenny government, Alberta. Kenny government, Alberta. Kenny government, Alberta. I just like that better. It's a little bit more focused. Okay, so right now, um, he's moving ahead. Yes, he is. Kenny main remains in a strong position right now. Um, for all the Albertans who don't want to hear that, I apologize. I wish I wasn't saying it, quite frankly. But there's definitely that sense that um, he hasn't been slowed down. He is, You know what? He's still in the honeymoon uh, period of this government. And at this point, they are still able to keep things secret that really should have been exposed. And so it's getting harder. It is hard still for the people of Alberta to actually be able to see with some clarity because they're being, they're receiving sort of some distorted information. Um, It's, this is, this is the problem, okay? Unlike the liberal um, federal government, who is mindful of the fact that they need to try to bring the two sides together and find some common place to begin conversations or growth from, the Kenya government is not at this point even remotely interested in doing that. They say the words, but their actions do not reflect the words they speak. And, you know, there's a reason why there's that old saying about, you know, don't listen to the words, watch their actions, right? Actions speak louder than words. There are reasons for those sayings. It's because usually they're right. So that's what we've got going on here, right? Is he's trying to balance, but it's not working because frankly, he hasn't tried to draw anybody um, towards him who perhaps, who perhaps didn't like him or didn't vote for him. Expect there to be a lot more sort of legal 
fights going on, whether he is fighting somebody provincially or federally, I, I don't know, but I'm seeing a lot of kind of aggressive court type of maneuvering going on. And ultimately, ultimately, it's not going to work very well for him. But for the time being, it absolutely keeps his people, his followers, the people who think he's amazing in line. Because, you know, if you ask them if, um, you know, they have more money in their pocket, they're going to come back with an answer that boils down to maybe I don't have more, but at least I don't have less, which makes no sense. Okay, it really doesn't, but that's what they're going to go with. And I am mindful of the fact that Alberta is a major oil producing province in this country and in fact globally, um, but they have suffered some severe downturns and people really in Alberta feel it's really important to kind of get back on that track where everything was booming. And people who are old enough recognize that this boom bust cycle in Alberta is literally the cycle that we live in. It just is. And so people get used to a certain standard of living during the booms. And then when it goes bust, they get all angry because, you know, they're entitled to what they made before. Well, you know what? Maybe you actually weren't even entitled to how much you were making before. Maybe you were just making it. So I don't see these lawsuits going well for Alberta. I definitely see, though, for right now, um, you've got people still supporting the idea. They're still loving the guy. Um, and they are doing what they need to do to sort of keep those promises they made or at least appear to be keeping the provinces. And more and more, you're going to see that there is, um, there's just things going on behind the scenes in the shadows that are slowly, slowly going to start coming to bear. But as, as horrible as it is at this point, unless the illumination on Kenny and what he's doing going forward is rather dramatic, which it very well could be with, you know, the sun and the chariot moving forward, there's going to be a lot of bright lights being illuminated on what's going on in this province. Um, it really is going to take something that Albertans as a whole see as um, incredibly contrary to their expectations of their government. Um, it's going to have to be something really quite um, big, you know, in order for people to pull back. They're not going to at this point. People get more stressed. They get more worried. Kenny doesn't care. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I live here too. He doesn't care. He is out to fulfill a certain sort of mandate that he has. And he feels that that sort of uh, Trumpian politics is going to work for him and he is going to keep on doing it. You know when that's going to start pulling back and these kinds of conservatives and these conservative attitudes are going to start getting corrected? It's going to be when Trump leaves office in the United States, when Brexit stops the whole Brexit thing. That is when those kinds of politicians are going to slowly start creeping back from their mandates and what they say is important because they realize that they somehow are not actually on the winning side of history. So, Alberta, um, look for the same thing. You're going to see wild increases in services um, in terms of how strained and stressed they are, right? So you're going to see fewer people doing the job and doing 10 times the job. So you're going to see less resources going to the places that resources should go. Um, and less, less that you can actually do, less that you can control. And, you know, people who put all of their eggs in one basket and believe without question what political leaders say sort of create this 
alternative reality. And that's where we are right now. So, Albertans, Ontarians, take a deep breath. Uh, it's going to go on for a while. I don't have any brilliant and amazing um, insights to give you at this time besides what I have said. Hang in there. Keep your thoughts positive. Stay centered. And recognize that like all nightmares, this one too will come to an end. And then it becomes the job of somebody else to clean up the damage and the destruction that was done. Okay, so um, that's all I kind of have to say at this moment. I will continue to do uh, Canadian political readings as I get questions or as people request them or when something really significant goes on and happens. Um, so please, if you want me to keep doing them, let me know and, and we can certainly make that happen. Thank you ever so much for all of the people who like and subscribe and leave me amazing comments and um, and the thumbs up. I love those likes. And um, for those of you who are interested, in the box below me, there is information. If you are interested in getting a private reading, please, out, please reach out to me through that um, avenue. Okay, so until next time, take care, be well. And I will see you all really, really soon. Bye.